Good morning and welcome to this Tuesday of the fifth week of Easter. So glad you could join me. So we continue our reflections in the Gospel of John. And we are in that part that is called the Farewell Discourse. This very intimate moment of Jesus with his disciples in the upper room before he'll be arrested. It's like a last testament where Jesus is teaching them the most important, essential things. And in this teaching that we have today, he says to his disciples, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. What is this peace that Jesus is talking about? What is immediately clear is that this is a peace that the world cannot give us. It's not a peace that you and I can produce by our own efforts. It, we can't think our way into this peace by some kind of positive thinking. Peace is not the absence of desire or passion. And therefore, to attain this peace, we don't suppress or deaden these desires and passions that are part of being human. This peace is not the, it does not mean the absence of conflict. In fact, Jesus enjoys this peace even during his passion during his suffering. So this peace is a gift from Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can give us this gift. And if we look at this teaching in the light of the whole gospel, we see that this peace is the fruit of the work of Jesus in your life and in mine. It's the work of the Holy Spirit, the grace of God in, in our souls, in our minds and in our hearts. And this is not a cheap peace. In fact, it's the fruit of many spiritual victories that follow after the, the, the various spiritual battles that are so much a part of our Christian life. I'd like to bring in some teaching of St. Augustine uh, to help us understand this gift. He's got some wonderful teachings uh, around this peace. First of all, he has a definition of peace that I really like, and I'm going to paraphrase him. He says, peace is the tranquility of order. It's when our desires and affections are gathered together and ordered to the one supreme love of God, who is our greatest good. And then he will go on to say later that this peace also comes by loving everything else in God and for the sake of God or for the love of God. This helps us to understand another teaching from Augustine when he says, O God, our hearts are restless until they rest in Thee. And so here we can understand the dynamics of conversion in our life. It's basically to reorder our love life. You know, sometimes people ask, how's your love life? <laughs> well, this is a very important question in the Christian life. Because, again, the work of grace, the work of God's Spirit in us, is to take our disordered love, our attachments to the things of this world, 
to take anything that we love outside of God and to reorder it, to put it at a different level of priority under God and to bring it within the umbrella of God's love. Whenever you and I love something that is not God, whenever we love it outside of God, when we become self-reliant, that's what brings restlessness and trouble to our heart. This is what results in restless striving for more and more. This is what results in sadness when we cannot have what we want. This is where fears come in of losing what we have, of what we think is up to us to protect and to provide for, rather than receive everything each day as a pure gift from God, and like the birds of the air, as Jesus said, to trust the Heavenly Father to provide for each day. When I'm in pride and I'm self-reliant, when I'm selfish and self-indulgent, this is what, this is the restlessness that Augustine is talking about, the troubled, restless heart. This is all the world can give us. <laughs> it can't give us peace. It can only uh, keep our hearts restless and troubled. What God wants to do, and this is reflected in those two commandments, to love God above all things with all my mind, my heart, and my strength, and then to love our neighbor as Jesus taught us, which is loving them in the love of God, loving them in God. And so let us pray today to bring every aspect of our life within this love of God, such that if someone were to stop you at any moment of the day and ask, why are you doing this? You can say, no matter what it is, I'm doing it for God. I'm doing it for the love of God. Let us pray for our openness to this work of Jesus in us. Let us allow him to take the compartmentalization of our life that is so common for us in our fallen state. We put religion in a box over here and then our social life in a box there. We have our work life over here, our recreational life over here. No, our Christian life, our love of God is to permeate everything. Just like you cannot separate a fish from the water or the water from the fish. The fish is in the water, the water's in the fish. So our, our life, when it comes to the love of God, we are to be in the love of God and the love of God in everything that we do and to order it all with Jesus in the Holy Spirit to order everything to God to do everything for God and in God and through God. This is when you and I will know the peace that is beyond all understanding, the peace that the world can never give us. This is the peace that gives rest to our soul when everything is ordered by this one supreme love of God. So peace be with you. And I hope that you and I will know this peace in a deeper way today. God bless you.